Welcome to Elastic. So what you want to do is we want to install Elastic on our local machine. So if you go to resources, documentation, and if you go to installation and upgrade guide 8.6 and installing the Elastic stack. In here, if you click on, let's say, install instructions for Elastic stack, you will get you know, the, instru the, instru the installation instructions. Now, depending on how you want to do it, if you want to do it with Debian, RPM, whatever, uh, I prefer to do it using Docker. So maybe let's try to use that approach. Um, in fact, let's click on run Elasticsearch locally. What you will see is from Elasticsearch version eight, um, you need certificates and authentication keys to connect to your Elastic instance, right? And that makes it a little bit more trickier. And don't worry, I'm going to cover it in my next video. But in this video, let's, rather than using a secure version of Elastic, uh, let's use a non-secure version. So basically the previous stable version was 7.17. And if I click on this, Elastic install with Docker, and I'm going to select 7.17, right? And here it actually provides you multiple ways of uh, starting uh, installing Elasticsearch. One is pulling the image, starting a single node, but the other one is to start a multi-node sort of cluster uh, set up on your own local machine. So I want to use this particular version. So let's say if I copy the whole thing, let's copy it. And before this, uh, your Docker desktop should be uh, should be running. So let me quickly start Docker as well in the background. And then let's just go and try to create a Docker Compose file. So we'll create a new file, docker compose.yaml. And I'm going to basically copy paste the whole thing. And what you see is in this particular Docker Compose file, you will get three Elastic services, one, two, and three. All of them will be running on the network Elastic, as you can see here. So we specify a network name Elastic. The driver is a default driver bridge. And we create three more volumes here, data 01, data 02, uh, data 03, which uses the local driver. And basically volumes are, uh, volumes help you, helps you to maintain all the history of your uh, previous runs. Like if you, even when you kill the containers, uh, next time when you when you run your application uh, you know like like for example as you can see here um, if i go back um, to discover as you can see like these runs are from previous days and of course i shut down my machine but i still have all this information all because of using volumes right and once docker starts maybe i can also show you where you can see this information so if I open Docker and if you go to volumes, you know, you can see here you can find all the volumes. And if you want to delete a particular volume, you can come and delete it from here, right? Um, and let's say if you are on Windows machine or on Mac machine, and if you're installing Docker desktop for the first time, for this to run, you have to increase your resources from minimum one GB to at least two GB. I have kept it four GB but remember to at least make it to, you know, uh, to GB. Let's go back. <clears throat> uh, some more things which could be of importance is like I'm giving a name to the container. You have a name of the node, name of the cluster, uh, discovery seed, like it can also discover uh, two and three, uh, two can discover one and three, and three can discover one and two, right? And then you have some memory logs and then you define some memory options of how much memory this container should consume. Now there's one thing that is missing here is it is only uh, starting Elastic, but it is not starting Kibana. So what you need to do is you also need to copy uh, the, the Kibana, uh, like you also need to specify a service for Kibana. So what I'm going to do is let's just copy paste this from my other project. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this Kibana uh, text. Let's go back and let's add it here. Uh, let's click here, 
tab control v so now we have we also have a container for kibana and let's change the version to the same version as what we have for uh, you know elastic let's call it <clears throat> um, we can even like either call it just kibana or if you want to give it a name uh, i think it will be good to give it a name right kibana and let's give this as zero elastic uh, zero elastic two zero elastic one okay anything else that i need to change no we have the same default ports this is the port of uh, the host this is the port of container uh, we have specified the services we have specified the name of the services the network is still elastic so everything looks looks good to me so now what we need to do is let's open a uh, open a terminal um, let's see if you already have any containers open clear screen so i'm going to give let's zoom in a little bit docker container ls okay let's see ls all ls all so we do have some exited containers right and i want to get rid of all these containers so what i'm going to do is i'm going to say all quick this will give me uh, the container ids and now what i'm going to do is i'm going to say docker container remove force and basically all these container ids so now it removed all these containers and if i run the command docker container ls all quite i don't see any container ids so we have a good starting point right so now let's change to our uh, project zero uh, look at the files these are all the files so we do have a docker compose file so now if i do docker compose up it will basically spin up all these uh, containers for us so let's see okay now it's starting up um, give it some time let's go back to uh, to see you know how you can um, how you can see if the elastic and kibana is up i have something written in the readme file so this is for kibana and i think if we use this let's go back windows 2 windows 3 let's see if our elastic is up or not reload okay not yet windows um, one let's see if kibana is up or not let's copy this Control c uh, windows 3 now elastic is up so at that time elastic was not up so if elastic is up you will see something like this name of the um, service which is up uh, you know the cluster name some of the information about it let's also see if kibana is up service unavailable license is not available uh, why is it complaining about the license uh, refresh cool now you can see that you know you can see elastic you can see kibana at this moment if you go to uh, stack management you will find nothing index management oh it actually has an index so i was playing around with it and because i did not remove the old data you know it's showing some data which i was playing around with so for example if you want to publish some information to elastic on this particular uh, index what you can do is if you go to um, dev tools and let's say if you want to post something you know you can i can put my brother's name here and if i say hey publish this and you will see that it was updated because the id was two so it changed the existing id but if i give it three it would be created so it inserted uh, more data into elastic and if you want to see where this data is if i go to discover and if you use customer you know you can see 
that it already contains some of the data. Now you will see that this data seems a little bit different than what I showed you here. And that is purely because once you select what you want to see, you know, then this JSON format goes away. So if you want to get, let's say if you want to see ID and if you want to see first name and last name, maybe also in next, then you can see all this information, right? So, so far we have seen uh, how we can install Elastic on a local machine. Now, uh, we also saw like how you can play around with it, how you can filter some information, uh, how it could be more useful for you in terms of trends and trends and history. And in the next video, I can show you like this information is, yeah, it's good to see that, you know, we can publish some data directly from Elastic, but what is, what is more useful for, for us is to see how I can publish my test run metadata on Elastic. And this is something which I can cover in my next session uh, to show how we can connect Elastic instance from our local machine to publish all this data that you see in this example uh, on your own Elastic instance. Uh, in the next video, we will use the local version of it, so not the cloud version. And, and in, in one of the future videos, I will also show how to connect to a cloud instance. So I hope this video made you a little bit more interested in why we should switch from using reporting tools to monitoring tools. Because with monitoring tools, you can also set some sort of some kind of alerts. So for example, when I was using Datadog, I could also set an alert that, hey, if more than 10 tasks are failing, send a notification to Slack. And you can do all these cool kind of things, uh, you know, using a monitoring tool, alerting tool, uh, but not with a simple snapshot like Surefire report. Uh, so with this, uh, well, I hope you, you found this useful and uh, I'll pause the video and I'll see you guys in the next video in which, we, in which we will see how to get all this information and how to publish all this information from your test framework uh, to your Elastic instance. Yeah. See you guys. Thank you. Bye-bye.